Welcome back. So we're going to be finishing off our power-ups. We had already set up the invincibility and the guns, and now all that's left is the laser power-up, which will be a little bit different to our other guns. All right, so we're actually gonna create a totally new object for the laser. So OBJ laser, and we're gonna be creating this instead of a bullet for the laser power-up. All right, now, I'm actually not gonna be using a sprite for this. We're gonna be using some of the built-in draw functions. And let's just come into the draw event so we can start thinking about how this is gonna work. Now, like I said, I wanna use some of the built-in draw functions to draw this line. So we're gonna use a function called draw line and let's go with, you can see down here the arguments that we're gonna need. So first of all, we do need to think about a length for the line. So we know that it's kind of going to be wherever the creator object is. And then we need to kind of plus a line going in the direction that we want. So it's gonna have a fixed direction variable that we should probably set when we create the object. And we might have to actually be updating its position and also its direction every step to make sure that it's following where its creator is going. So keep in mind that we will have a creator variable and we're gonna need to be transporting ourselves to the creator's position every frame. So remember, we don't have access to this yet, but we're gonna need to pass this in in our create bullet script for the laser. Now we could set direction or image angle here. I'm gonna put image angle because that was how we were controlling where all of the ships are shooting. It's always the image angle. If that ever changes, we will need to change that as well, but that is a safe bet for now. The other thing that we have to be careful of is if our creator doesn't actually exist while we exist. So it's possible that the player has just fired off a laser and then become destroyed by something. So we do have to check if our creator does not exist. So if not instance exists, then well, we want to destroy ourselves and also not do any of this. All right, cool. So now we are in the draw event for this. You can still run code like this in the draw event. It operates in the same way that the step does. It is called every frame. Normally we put draw code in here, but we can do other things as well. So we could actually just cut this out and put it into the step event because that's where we're normally updating the positions of everything and it will still carry on to here. So now we, we should be at the appropriate position because the draw event is run after the step event. All right, so now we can actually use the same function that we had before to draw the line in the correct direction. So we have the direction, we just need the two points at which to draw the line between. So this point right here we know, but we need to get this point. So we need a length. Uh, again, we can set up a variable for this. So I'm gonna set up len for length and i'm gonna set that to 500 for now so it's quite big it's actually the same size as our camera width and height if you remember and the direction will be direction i might do this over multiple lines okay and same for y oh what have we forgotten we've forgotten to specify the width okay yeah, so this will be the width of the line. You can have a play with this, but I'm gonna keep it fairly small so at just two. All right, so that is the line drawn. So we've drawn the line, but this isn't colliding with anything. So again, I want to keep this next bit general. So there isn't a proper collision event that we can say collide with line in here. We're gonna have to use a function now for a collision. And the one I'm gonna use is called collision line. And now we can plug in actually basically the same variables as we have right here. So I'm gonna just copy paste them into here. We don't need the width one though. So that is the two points that the collision line is going to check between exactly where it's drawing. Now we need to say, what object is it going to be colliding with? Well, this could be an object just for the player. And so we would know that we're only colliding with the OBJ faction enemy, but who knows, maybe you do want the enemy to be able to use lasers as well. So we can't just put this. We need a way of working out what our faction is. 
So we might say OBJ faction, but after this we are going to have to kind of work out if the object we're colliding with is part of our faction or not. And if it's not, we don't actually want to be doing anything to it. But for now, let's just fill in the rest of these. So the rest of the arguments are asking, do you want this to be a precise collision? We actually don't. We're not using precise collision masks. We're using kind of shapes. And not me means exclude me from this collision. So if we're colliding with ourselves, don't include us. It doesn't actually matter. The laser object is not a part of OBJ faction. So we can actually just say false. So that is the collision line. Now this is going to return. Actually, let's just middle click and have a look. So this will return the ID of instances that it collides with. It actually is only going to return one ID. It doesn't really matter if we're only colliding with one at a time. Since this is running 60 frames per second, it's going to kind of update very fast. So I'm not too worried about that. But we do want to save the result in here. So this, like I said, this will be returning either someone, so someone's ID, or it will return a keyword called no one. So it's not returning true or false like a lot of other collisions. It's going to return no one or an ID. So down here, we can check if inst does not equal no one. So it does not equal. So it, does, it means that it does equal something other than no one. So it has an ID of something, it's collided. Then we want to check if inst faction does not equal our faction. Then we will get the inst. To perform event one. So it's a uh, take damage event. This isn't, again, this isn't set up. We don't know what the faction is. We also don't know who our creator is, but this will be passed into the object when it gets created. Now, at the moment, since this object is kind of moving with its creator, technically it's going to just stay there forever at the moment. We haven't uh, made a way to destroy the laser. So what I'm going to do is actually just have it be up for about a half second and then destroy itself. So up here in its create event, I'm going to set its alarm to half a second. And after that goes off, we will destroy ourselves. And remember at the moment, the creator and the faction that it is part of is undefined. So we want to overwrite these. All right, so that is all the setup of the laser. I actually might come back to this uh, if we want to have any instances be immune to the laser. I might actually make the brute immune just as, a, as another thing that we can add in, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just check that we can actually create it. So first of all, before I forget, I'm going to set this to the laser bullets, um, but we have to head back to the Create bullet script. And let's go down to laser bullets. Okay. So in here, we're going to be playing a different sound effect. So let's just do that first. So sound laser. We're going to be creating a bullet. Well, we're going to be creating the laser. And now we can actually reuse this right here for the laser, but we do have to uh, adapt one thing. We actually don't want to be setting its speed to anything. So I do want to check right here if the object index is equal to obj bullet. Only then do I want to be setting its speed. Right? All we know right now is the instance ID itself. And it's going to be performing all of this uh, initializing of the bullet, regardless of what type of instance gets passed in. So we have to be careful that only if it is a bullet, not if it's a laser, do this stuff. And actually, I think let's just make sure that the image blend is going to be taken into account for the laser. So remember, we're not using a sprite, so we actually have to make sure that the color is being used when it's being drawn. And at the moment, it's actually not. So we're going to use a different function just to get that working. And you can see you can actually pass in two colors and that will kind of blend the color. That might be a pretty cool effect, actually. So if you want to start it off as its image blend and then you want to make it something else like white or something, that could be a cool effect. I might actually just make it totally uh, whatever the faction is just to make it clear. All right. So now if we run the game and we test all of this, let's see if our laser works. 
There we go. So you can see how kind of powerful it is. It will blow everything up really quickly. So that's it. We have set up all of the different power-ups. Now we just have to spawn the power-ups at different times. So I'm going to come into the game, delete our test one, and let's actually come back to the power-ups to make sure that they are making random ones now. Since all of them are working, we can delete this. And we just have to head into the destroy events of the asteroids and also the enemies. So let's create a new event called destroy. And we're going to check. We're going to basically, we want a random chance for it to create a power up. I don't want it creating a power up every time an asteroid is destroyed. I want to make it at least a little bit rare. So I'm going to say if I random range and I'll go from zero to five equals zero. So there is a one in six chance, actually, that's a little bit confusing, but zero to five that it will actually return zero. So one in six chance that it's going to pass this little test. In the case that it does, we just want to spawn a power up. So instance create layer, XY, instances OBJ power up. There we go. And let's copy this, head over to the enemy ship. Now this is kind of general code, so I do want it to be doing this regardless of the enemy ship. Actually, you might want to add uh, some different chances for the different enemies. So I might have this uh, spawn at a slightly higher chance than the asteroid. So one in three for these, just because the enemies are a little bit trickier to destroy. Actually, I might even do one in two. So let's give that a go. Oh, actually, we had turned off the enemy spawning. So let's turn them back on. And hopefully our game is a lot more exciting now. There we go. So I actually think I managed to run into that one. So we got these working. All right, great. Now, like I said, um, one cool thing that we could do is because the lasers are so powerful and there's n kind of no hope for the enemies at that point, I might actually make the brutes immune to the laser. So I'm going to set up a new, a totally new variable for everyone because everyone will need to have this called immune to laser. And I'm going to set false. And now quickly, I just want to check that the factions are all actually inheriting this. So if we head over to the neutral, we can see that it is. But for the other two, I believe we didn't actually have event inherited in their create event because they were just overriding it. So we want this to inherit from its parent and then just uh, it can just overwrite those other ones. But now if we ever put anything in faction, we do want it to be inheriting from it. And we'll do the same here. All right. So they'll all inherit that except for the brute. Who I'll set it to true. And now let's come into the lasers code. And we can say down here, if immune to laser or sorry, if not immune to laser, then it will perform this code. So now let's go and hopefully grab a laser and try and hit a brute with it. All right, so we got a laser and let's go and test it on a brute. And we can see that the brute is immune to the laser. So it's a bit dangerous for us. We just have to run away. All right, so that is it for power ups. And we're pretty much done with a lot of our upgrades to the game. Although I think it could do with some sprucing up of the explosions and some particle effects. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating particle systems for a lot of this, maybe adding some screen shake to the game to make it a little bit more impactful when we're firing our weapons and blowing up ships. So I will see you in the next tutorial.